There's about we need more food. We had enough. We're done. Yeah. Take the food back. Food that's not cooked. That's just there. We're like, what do you mean take the food back? Welcome to Real Kitchen Sessions. I'm Chef. Today we have a very special guest. We're joined by Mama A's owner and chef, Nia. She's a highly regarded chef known for her experience in Jamaican cuisine. Chef, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about the way you got started? Um, I think I got started how most people get started cooking is you see your parents cook mm. and you're like, either you're an impatient child and you're like, I want to figure it out on my own so I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. Or you're just curious about what they're doing. So... I have a Jamaican mother, so I would just watch her in the kitchen cook. And then um, something about Caribbean parents, they don't teach you how to cook. Mm. You just figure it out by watching them. So I'd watch her and I would just copy what I see her doing. Mm -hmm. And then I would watch Food Network and I would mix like the home cooking with what I'm seeing with like professional chefs on, on TV and like just figure the two out. And then that's, that's me. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> have you ever had any mess ups that turned out great? I thought a lot of us turned out great, and no one knows. They're like, hey, you have no idea. Like, the we disaster. ran out of this. <laughs> we ran yeah. out of that. Yeah. Being able to flip it and, and, and make something. My mom yeah. used to have a restaurant, so like I learned a lot on the fly stuff yeah. from her of how to make things just work in your favor. What was so. that? That last one? What was the name of it? Her restaurant? Mm hmm. So the one that she had in Colleen was Caribbean Tea House and Gift Shop. Uh -huh. She's in the Middle East now. Oh, wow. So she does the same thing for the Middle East. Um, but she's the only Jamaican anything in yeah. the Middle East. So oh. <laughs> she has that yeah. niche pocket. Yeah. So everybody goes favorite. to her because they know the Jamaican food's there. Yes. They, they know. You say Jamaican food and you're in quit. They're like, oh, mm -hmm. is it the black lady with the dreadlocks? Yeah, yeah, I know They're like, her. oh, I know her. Yeah. yeah. What makes Jamaican cuisine Jamaican? I think it's the herbs that we use, techniques, the the time, the time and the time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, It's a lot of hard work and it usually takes a couple hours to make these dishes. However, I think it's worth it. And I don't know, I was raised with it. So like I was raised on Jamaican food. I wasn't raised yeah. on Southern cuisine. So to me, that is normal. I'm bringing yeah. curry chicken and rice and peas to school and people are like, yo, what is that? And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, my grandmother always made tacos for breakfast. Mm -hmm. She'll give me like 12 tacos because she knew I was going to sell them and trade them. So like every time I, was, yeah. I, like it. I appreciate it. So like, yeah, that's how I grew up is like tacos. You can make a thousand different, a million probably different tacos. You know, you get yourself a tortilla mm -hmm. or even a bread taco, <laughs> you know, yeah. have little chips in there. <laughs> yeah, you can make it in so many different, in different ways. So you talked about uh, Jamaican herbs. What herbs do y'all guys usually use uh, for Jamaican cuisine? The, the biggest one is thyme. thyme. That's like the number one. It's in mm -hmm. every single thing we make. Yeah. And it's like a signature where if you're eating a Jamaican dish and you don't taste it, they're mm -hmm. going to say that's not a Jamaican dish because you're missing the key component, which is mm -hmm. But that's number one that we, we use. We use like all spice and other, other things, but thyme is the most important one that we have. The herb time and also time to cook. Yes. For those that don't know, I just had to explain time a little time, bit. Yeah. <laughs> time and time. Yes. <laughs> have you ever have you had these before? Uh, no, I haven't. The king uh, palms. King I actually palms. had so the, the turf ones where it no. has like, you know, like for like cigarette smokers, there's um, uh, like the camel tips. crushes. Yeah. That you can make it menthol. Oh, same, wow. same like idea, but it's not menthol. It's a flavor. So this is blueberry. Nice. Yeah, they have a lot of different flavors. So for um, King Palm, there was, oh, I think we got where we finished them. They make a really nice rose. Um, it's made out of a rose. It's a cone. No, no, I've had it. You've had it? I've yeah. Had it. And it's organic. I've had and it. And I'm like, yes. I'm the one that like when I go to the shop, I'm like, oh, what's that? Yeah. Let me try that. Yeah. yeah. I thought these were going to be kind of like that, the blazing season. Mm -hmm. And then like I got it and I was like, this is not, not yeah. what I thought it was. I don't like those, but my wife be. loves them. I think I like it because they're pink. They yeah. have purple ones too. Yeah, they were jig is doing that. Yeah, it's it's cute. It's for the oh, do you want to be cute? Or the girl? Yeah. So, <laughs> marketing works. It totally did. Oh, can we do this in the house? That's what yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'll That's, do it and then it's like <laughs> Yeah, so what time? We're already past the four twenty mark, so oh. I guess we can go ahead and get lit. For take. So being a chef in the industry, how long have you been in the industry? I'm green, man. 
I'm green and I'm not like typical. I think I have like a different path than most people have. Mm -hmm. Um, So like professionally, I'm saying like a year and a half. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, like brand new. It's just that being in Austin, I know a lot of people from being Mm -hmm. here for like 10, 11 years. So like I don't burn bridges or mess up your money. That's Um, what's up. I just feel like it's like courtesy, you know? Mm-hmm. Some people have like a stinky attitude, however, it's like, but they do a really good job work wise, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you ever had to hire anybody? I have like two people that work for me right now. I'm gonna have okay. more whenever I have my, uh, that, that South by event, but like right now, two people that I okay. go to, like, can you run deliveries for me? Can you help me in the kitchen? Kind of thing. And mm-hmm. so I'm teaching them some stuff, and then some stuff are like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I mean, I could, I could explain it to you, but you're, if you're not like passionate about cooking, mm-hmm. you kind of don't care. You yeah. know, it's just kind of going to go over your head, which is fine. I'm not mad yeah. about it, but that's why when I have people who like know what they're, like they already have a thing for cooking, a passion for cooking, mm-hmm. where the, uh, if I tell them, this is how you make rice and peas and you have to make it this way because my or else, used to, yeah. it'd be like, like coconut milk is a big thing in rice and peas for Jamaican, for Jamaican. So mm-hmm. like I can eat someone's rice and peas and I'll be like, oh, you put coconut milk in there. I'm like, how do you know? I'm like, because it's not like the texture is not there. It's missing, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so you spoke about those people that you hired and some of them not really caring. How did you get over that? I didn't take it personal. How I think is like, this is my business and I'm the one that loves it. I'm the one that cares about it. So mm-hmm. like, if I need you to be here at 4 a.m., I'd be willing to be here at 4 a.m., 2 or 3 a.m. Because yeah. If I'm not going to put the work in and do it, I can't expect you to put the work in and do it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a job can just be a financial thing for you and that, and that's fine, but don't half-ass something. If you're going to half-ass it, hey, I'm going to pull you aside. Are you okay? Like, what's going on? What's wrong? I think another answer to that is finding people, where I found the people, but get the people who already have a love or passion for it and get them to be the ones that are in it because they're going to be the ones like, oh, okay, like, I'm used to doing it this way, but what's the way that you do it or how do you need me to do it? So it's, it's efficient. And then once you, you know, show them or demo it for them, they'll be able to do it. And it's just more so you're just checking. Okay, great. That's good. We can, Mm -hmm. we can go with that and that's fine. So at that point they either leave or they start doing the job, you know, that makes sense. Like it's just honest. I feel like we're, we're all adults here. Right. So it's like, let's just be honest, you know, you don't have to be here. There's yeah. someone else who would do the same job. You're going for the same pay, mm-hmm. but they want to be here. You know what I mean? And I don't think that's wrong. Like with the yeah. friend that that's helping me, she has her own dreams and passions. I told her, I'm like, I don't care when you want to not do this anymore. Yeah. Just give me a heads just up. Just let dude, me know. I will not. If you're like, hey, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. That's fine. You know, I wish you the best in your journey. And I really do wish you the best in your journey. Yeah. And I'm going to go find somebody else that can do the job or they're in that field already. And they just, they just want experience, yeah. you know, because I've done a lot of experience with people paid, not paid, screwed over financially and didn't mm-hmm. get paid. But it's like, it's all an experience, you know, and that's mm-hmm. something you put in your pocket for later. You know, the culture nowadays is changing so fast with these modern times and technologies. How do you keep traditional Jamaican dishes relevant in this type of culinary landscape? Like everything's changing so fast. Uh, it is a lot of different stuff. And I see some things where I'm like, mm, that's interesting or that, that's different. So I like to say that Mama A's, which I named after my mother, Ayana, Mama A's is the traditional Jamaican dish. It's the way like my mother made it, right? That I was used to growing up. However, there are some ways or techniques that, let's be honest, uh, sh- can be tweaked just for either a better taste or health wise. So, and I tell this to customers all the time, and it helps them with being comfortable eating there. I'm mm-hmm. very transparent in my ingredients. So, I'll say, you know, um, there are no added fats, oils, or butters in anything that's made except for like the patties and cocoa bread because it has to you be You have pastry. to, yeah. Otherwise, it's not going to be flaky like you want it to be. Patties got to have um, a lot of fat in them. It's a lot of butter, a lot of butter, <laughs> milk, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but they're like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, the cabbage and the spinach is actually um, is sautéed. So the, it's just, you know, a little bit of water than the vegetables. Mm-hmm. Using, like It's like that. And they're like, oh, and I'm making it in front of their face. They're like, is this like a secret recipe? I'm like, no, I can make whatever I make yeah. in front of you. And I highly doubt you're going to go home and make it the same way I, yeah. I did. And if you do, cool. I, I don't care. I don't think you have to, like, gatekeep everything. 
except like some stuff. So like, I will say my mother won't let me like, people ask me a lot, what's your oxal recipe? I'm like, I can't tell you mm-hmm. because my mother would kill me. Like legitimately, she's like, don't you ever tell anyone unless they are blood family. And I was like, okay. To pass it down that way. Yeah. yeah. Like my sister's husband, he yeah. wants it so bad. And he, she's like, no, <laughs> and she's like, I'm married to your daughter. She's like, but you're not my blood. Like your kid can know, but you can't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, but like the keeping modern, it's like, okay, we live in Texas, right? The average person in Texas doesn't know what oxtails are. Mm. They're like, what's, what's that? If you say you tell the cow, they're like, ew. It's like, <laughs> okay. So I try to compare things. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. They're like, mm, I don't know what's oxtail. Say, do you like brisket? Oh, I love brisket. Oxtail is brisket. It's a little bit more savory, mm-hmm. a little bit different spices, but it's still a tender piece of it's meat. It's so good because it has the bones. Yeah. Exactly. You're getting that good marrow, that, that good collagen, in there yeah. too, and it congeals together. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they're like, and then like for um, like curry chicken, I'm like, curry chicken is definitely like Indian curry. It's just that there's like a couple different spices. Like we get a lot of spices from, from India. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... It's just, if you find a comparison, it's easier if people want to try something new. Mm-hmm. And then, so, like, even then with the comparison of oxtail and brisket, they're still, like, weirded out because of the bone. Americans don't like bones. It's just, like, fried yeah. chicken. Even on fish, too. Like, you serve them oh, a whole they fish and they look at you crazy. They're like, are you serious? Why, why is there a head and a tail? <laughs> why do you just have eyes? I had someone DM me. They're like, <laughs> yeah, I see your fish, but why do you have the head and the tail? I'm like, Islanders want the head and tail. Yeah. Americans want it a fillet. Yeah, that's the difference. Like, I'll make customers a red snapper fillet, but only the islanders say, "Can I please have the head?" Because in our in our islands, the eye is like a big deal, and you can get to, like the elder, the wise, the wise mm-hmm. one, you know, gets it. Um, I I still don't like like it, but um, I decided to do oxo sliders. Oh, nice. So we had geeks who drink at Native, mm-hmm. and so I was like, "What kind of like? I need to do bar bites. What what can I do?" And I'm yeah. like, "Okay, jerk tacos, oxo sliders." mini patties jerk wings mm-hmm. and now they're recognizing the other half of that world i know what sliders are i know what wings are i know tacos and then bam let's try it out and then austin's so known for blends of cultural foods mm-hmm. like the cilantro la yeah like, all the they fusions have these food, very yeah. different uh east side kings all these very different fusions of food mm-hmm. that just really work together yeah and so like that's my thing and i like to um like in the future i'm about to do these uh dinners and um, if I'm a, if, uh, I might be doing it with um, a wine company called 1130 Wines. And mm. so if we're able to do this, we'll have these dinners in Austin. That'll be Jamaican cuisine or Jamaican cuisine inspired dishes with wine pairings and like wine cocktails. So, you know, we're thinking, I was thinking about doing like an oxtail ragu with like truffle bread. It's like now you're that mixing it on Jamaican. Yeah. yeah so some, why not? Like mm-hmm. why not play with food and have these like really cool things. My friend Sarah's Laotian. And I'm like, let's get in the kitchen. Yeah. And just like, you make some Laotian things, I make some uh, Jamaican things, we try it. And then we think, okay, what if you do? I do my spring roll wrappers with your, I don't know, brown stew or something like mm-hmm. that. And we can really fuse these two cultures that you would never get this fusion of food. And it's very unique. And I'm like, yeah, yeah why not? That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's just fun. You should, we should have fun with food. And I think you can have traditional and you should know traditional at the root, but why not change it? So speaking of mama, a, what does she think of your business? Oh my goodness. My mom is like one of my biggest supporters. My, I can't pick between like my, between my mom, my dad and my sister and my brother. Like everybody's like very supportive. That's so awesome. I'm very thankful yeah. for but like she's very supportive. Um, we have a nine hour time difference with her mm. being in Kuwait. And okay, Monday, I was I had a really like ugh, Monday where like so much like random dumb stuff was happening to me. I'm not a clumsy person, so when things like that happen, I'm like, all right, what, what's going on today? And so I called my mom and well, I texted her when I was working, and I was like, oh mom, like I really miss you. I wish you were. I wish you were here. Like I really wish you were here to help me. And because I know my mom and I in the kitchen together because we used to when I was younger and I was helping her when it was her restaurant and she'd be like, Nia, get the rice and, you know, make the rice and then get the, the chicken ready. She didn't have to tell me what to do because I already knew how to do it. Yeah. And so just like when I was like, I needed help and I was like, I needed to see my mother or even my sister because I know you already know how to do it mm-hmm. and it's not going to be this holding your hand to show you kind of uh, thing, but... I texted that to her, right? Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like, 
10 o'clock at night. For her, it's like super early in the morning. And um, she calls me, hello, hey, hey, baby girl, um, you okay? And I'm like, oh, mommy, I'm at work. I can't talk right now. And she was like, okay, sugar, well, you text me. And I just want to make sure you're okay. And I was like, oh, I'm just frustrated. I'll be, I'll be fine. I'm working. I can't, like, do this right yeah. now. But, like, it it helped me a lot. And she's like, I know it's a lot of hard work. And I know you're tired. I've been where you are. But you'll be fine. Like, I'm not... I'm not worried about you, but mm. I do wish I was there to help you. You know, if, if I was there with you, we'd be singing out like crazy and, oh man, the ideas we could have, you know? And so, but it's nice that I can talk to her. And to be honest, she's the only one in my family that like understands everything I'm going through and doing. Cause she's done it. She's it. She's done it all, but she did it with no guidance. Oh, wow. So and she made these mistakes and mm. she didn't have to be like, oh, hey, by the way, before you do this, don't do that. Do it this way. It's better. Or this is the way you have to do it. She just tried it and then figured out, oh, that was the wrong way. Let me let me do it this other way, you know? So mm -hmm. I the good thing about seeing that is you get to learn from that. So yeah, and improve on that, too, for the, the next generation. However many mistakes she made, I'm like, I already know how to make those. Yeah. Let me do these choices. And then um, I know one of your questions were mentorship. Yeah. And um, I'm not a believer in like uh, like mentors mm -hmm. or um, role models because I feel like when you're a kid, you have a role model. As a kid, you're thinking this person's perfect mm -hmm. and they mess up. They're a human error, which mm -hmm. they're allowed to have. And as a kid, you're like, oh, they're not a good role model. A parent gets mad at that person. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's not fair. You're not allowed them to be human and make mistakes. However, I wasn't realizing that like with like a mentorship, it's like you're not idolizing this person. You're like, wow, I really respect what you do mm -hmm. and how you do it. And like I used to work at Native as a hostel manager mm -hmm. and then I quit to work for the IRS. I have a very vast uh, work history. Mm -hmm. um, and CK was the one that uh, was a GM there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's the one that owns Wu Chow's. And um Sent him my, my resignation and he was like, are you really going to leave? And I was like, oh, I just, I have to make this adult decision mm -hmm. because this is like a financial decision. And um, he was like, okay, but if you want to come back, like, let me know. And so um, I quit my job and then I, I messaged him and I was like, I don't want to work for anyone ever again in my life. I want to work for myself and it's already starting today. And I want to do this food thing and I want to know if I can do it at Native. And he was like, let's sit down and have a conversation. So we nice. did. He let me be at Native. That's how I got that mm -hmm. thing at Native. That's how you got in. Um, yeah. From my non burn bridge at Native <laughs> with him <laughs> and the owners. And um, he was like, yeah, I come into your thing. I believe in your vision. I think your food's dope. So like, let's see what you can do with what you're given. Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, awesome. And I'll text him or call him for like, Hey, are you busy? Which he's a busy guy. He's a, he's a very busy yeah. guy. And I'll text him like, Hey, you got like two minutes to like talk. And I mean a text. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, sure. Let's hop on a call. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Okay. And he'll talk to me and, and I'll, you know, ask him, should I do this? Should I do that? And he'll be like, uh, you know, I think this is what I think, but you're going to do whatever you want to do, but make sure you don't do it for less than this and know your mm -hmm. work. So, like, I realized that, like, I was, like, naturally making this mentor bond with him, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that, but, like, I've been really lucky. With, That's pretty with, cool, because he's really smart that. with business, you know? He's, he's, he's amazing. amazing. He's yeah. amazing. And he's a, he's a really, like, nice human being, mm -hmm. and I just really appreciate that he's just kind to others. Like, he's just really, really... Nice guy. Native has been, it's been out for a while. It's on the east side of Austin, 807 East 4th Street. It's the building wrapped in all the cool graffiti and murals. Um, not that far from the convention center. Where do you park? Because I went down there the other day and it's not like it was. Let everybody know Native is always changing, which is what helps Native stay relevant. They mm -hmm. know when to change and how to change because it used to be a hostel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they changed their parking lot into a soccer field for a That's while. That's what it was, yeah. Um, but no, you can park on the street and like the surrounding blocks mm -hmm. and there's a parking garage by that Target and Whole Foods mm -hmm. as well too. My suggestion is to get there early so you're not having to park within a couple blocks to, to go in. Nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Home> <laughs> suggestion. Yeah. Is uh yeah they opened up a couple of other places there now right? Inside native. Yeah. Yeah. So inside. Well, the food trucks on the outside. Well, no, it's only La Santa now. Oh, La Santa's the only La Santa one Barbacha, there now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the Santa, Barbacha. Yeah. There used to be a couple others. Yeah. So like, okay, whenever I started up there doing food, there was no food there. 
so it's just me. And there's this coffee shop that was coming up. Now they're Idlewild, mm-hmm. very well known coffee shop. They have a couple locations. So it's me, then Idlewild was building. La Santa came in, and then it was La John's was there. Mm-hmm. Pa- Panda. Oh my God, was this Panda Cowboy? Cowboy Panda? Cowboy you know Panda. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking um, about. Yeah. And then it was Vegan Nom. It was some vegan truck that was there. Yeah, Vegan Nom is on uh, Cesar Chavez now. Okay, yeah, so it was there. Then they moved. And LeJohn's moved. Mm-hmm. Cowboy Panda moved. La Santa's still there. There's Tiny Diner, which they're, I think, well, and I think they're partnered with uh, Auto Wild Coffee. Um, and then you have, whenever you like go to the room that's next to the bar, like where the soccer field is. Mm-hmm. There is, uh, on one side, it's uh, Sugar Baby Plant Co. So uh, it's a woman-owned store. Her name is Danielle. She sells plants. She sells necklaces, earrings. Then next to that is East, side, East End Tattoo, where the bookshelf is. That's the Sushi Speak Easy Toshikan. Toshikan, yeah. Yeah. Where so, I used to work. So co- Yeah, there you go. It's like, <laughs> there's a, there's a quite a few places uh, mixed in. Oh, I was doing this event with somebody, and um, he was like, yeah, we got we got three days of prep. Right. But three of the day of the three days, one of those days was a day of the event. And I was like, no, we got two days. Of two days. Yeah. And that, I'm thinking this in my mind, mind you. Also, I'm not, I'm not going to over talk to some. I'm not going to I'm not going to try to take over somebody something unless they ask me directly. Like, do you think there's a different way to do this? And I'll be like, yes, if you allow me to, to make the suggestion and make the play. Cool. But if you want to do it your way, that's not my I'm here to do a job and I'm not I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers. Yeah. So, um. It was uh it was fine, right? First two days go fine. Day of. Hey. We're doing the event. I mean we're we're in the kitchen and we're like the event's for like four hundred people, like food wise, but mm-hmm. in the end we had too much food. Um but yeah, we're like going quick, quick, quick. Well somebody turns a corner and drops a tray of like sliced cucumbers. Oh no. And he was like, damn. <laughs> Fuck it. No cucumbers. And the other person was like, no, like, I'll just go get some. Like, we don't have time to cut more cucumbers. Yeah. And it was the thing of it being left out. It's like, well, why was it out? And I was like, it doesn't matter if it was left out on purpose by it's accident. It's done. Let's just move on. It's done. Either we go get more cucumbers or we say F it and, and yeah, call, 86. call it a day. Yeah. And then, like, we went to the event and we split up the food where it's like, this food's done. Take it now. Mm-hmm. And start plating everything. And then we're like rushing food from the kitchen, from a, a kitchen commissary mm-hmm. to the event during high traffic time here. Mm, so it's like oh, the wow. lead. It was yeah. really a 10 minute drive or five minute drive. Well, it's going to take you like 30, 40 minutes. taking 30, 40 fucking minutes. Yeah. And I, excuse my language. And um, <laughs> he was like, hey, do you, you need more chicken? And I was like, the event's over. They're talking about, what do you mean more food? We had enough. We're done. Yeah. Take the food back. Food that's not cooked. That's just there and we're like what, what do you mean take the food back so i learned a lot about like time and preparation mm-hmm. and communication and I, the one thing i said to him was i said what i do with customers and they say hey i want beef patties for 300 people mm-hmm. you sure yeah well why not i'm like well do the math that's how much it costs that's a lot of, do you have that money oh that's too much cool what's your actual budget yeah you know and then like let's think about we'll just call it like a cocktail hour with bites don't say meal because mm-hmm. you got to work in your budget and and what you uh in reality. Mm-hmm. So somebody might say, "Yeah, food for four hundred people." You sure? Because mm-hmm. that's a lot of food. You want you want each item for that many people, or enough chicken for four hundred and salad for one fifty? Like, what are you actually asking? Yeah. And so like, that was part of the issue. He was like, "Oh, that's a good point. I should have asked." I'm like, "No, you're you're not thinking of it because you think that the customer knows what they're talking mm-hmm. about." But you have to be very transparent on both ends. But so respectful, you gotta find that little balance yeah. of I'm not talking to you like you're my child, but I want to make sure that you like understand the most basic level what I'm meaning. Yeah. So you ever get um uh, have you ever heard people like, Oh, that's a lot for that food? Like yeah, I do want to talk about that because yeah. like I have no problem explaining. My mom's like, you don't explain to anybody, mm-hmm. price is the price. I'm like, I hear what you're saying, but also I like explaining things to people. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, I want to make sure you know for sure what I mean. If not, let's figure out how to make that happen. And so someone was like, your oxtail, that's expensive. $25 is expensive. And I was like, cool. Do you want to go over why it's that price? I'll totally go with you. Number one, inflation. Mm-hmm. So when I started, yes. when I started this, oxtail at Fiesta 
which is the only place you can find fresh oxo besides H E B, is six dollars a pound or five, no five something five dollars something a pound. Yeah. Cool. Five times three point five. That's how much I'm selling it for. So I used to sell it for eighteen dollars. Mm-hmm. And then I was like. When I had time and labor and ingredients, these are fresh ingredients. And overhead and packaging. Yeah. <laughs> and it takes four hours to make these because the way we make them, we want to make sure they're tender, mm-hmm. raised and tender. I was like. And electricity and gas. It all time. adds up. Yeah. So, and I told one of my cousins, I was like, hey, well, you know, now after like two more weeks of this $18 price, I'm bumping it up to 25 and They're like, whoa, that's a lot. I'm like, yeah. So. But it's a specialty. I'm going off of this, this specialty, time, labor, all of that my family's recipe as well as what i'm seeing in the city i look at my competition Mm -hmm. you know and i think everybody can exist in in, and that's cool whatever i'm not like oh what's this person doing i wish i was seeing what they're doing i'm like oh that's cool i have my own thing that's a special thing that people can't get from you like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who do handmade patties here in austin Mm -hmm. it's like i think there's like two or three of us right now that's ridiculous yeah but whatever you know um but yeah, I said I actually explained to her how much oxos were, how much it cost, and why it's the price it is. And I said like, technically, technically, it should be thirty five dollars. To be honest, mm-hmm. everything that you're going through and how much you're just a pound of meat, it yeah. should be it should be a lot more than that. And she was like, okay, that's fair. Mm-hmm. She's like, that's still a lot. And I'm like, you know, if you want oxtail, it's like a cocktail. Yeah, I'm like, if you want oxtail and you can't afford it, you could get an oxo patty. It's ten bucks. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. I'm like, it might be a lot for a pastry, but because that meat cut is expensive now. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because Oxo used to be the trash. Yeah. When we got here, we moved to, we're military. We moved to Colleen. And my mom went to the bitch to get Oxo. They're like, what, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. We don't sell Ox. She's like, so tell the cow, can I have it? And they were like, we don't sell those. She's like, so what do you do with it? He's like, we throw them away. So butchers used to throw away the Ox. Yeah. The tail of the, of, of the cow wasn't a thing. My mom was like, cool, I want it. How much? She's like, you can just have it. So we used to get oxo for free when I was a nice. kid. Nice, yes. Okay, this is like mid nineties, late nineties, and then I say, and then they used to be like, okay, now you got to pay a dollar per pound. I was like, I don't care, that's fine. Mm-hmm. And the most you paid was six bucks for if we're getting clean because that's how it's yeah. getting more popular. Now there's more Caribbean restaurants popping up, and now here and the highest I've seen in Austin is twelve dollars, and that's cheap compared to like other places in the U.S. Yeah, but same with fajitas. And three yeah. plus and all yes. the messing stuff. It's went up so much. Yeah. It's went up so much. Because I use uh, uh, the, the skirt for. Yes. Uh, oh my gosh. Special on a thing I do. And it used to be like two or three dollars. Yeah. Out. And I went and it was seven the other day. And I was like, hold on. Seven. That's actually cheap. I was like, hold on. Why is it seven dollars? And he was like, so do you want it or not? I was like, I do. Put it in the bag. Dude, I priced it at 11 one time. Someone was asking me for a catering gig. Yeah. And it was only for like 140 people. Yeah. And they told me their budget. I was like, no. I almost lost that client. But then I was like, you know what? I was like, let's come up with another plan. What's What can you afford? Mm-hmm. And I was like, so let's do some other type of beef. So what we ended up going with was um, some barbacoa tacos made from brisket. Okay. And uh, some fajita chicken. We just I bought some chicken thighs and just cut out the bones. I used the bones for the stock to make everything that I cooked. Yeah. And then um, went from there and she loved it. So I, I, I do think whenever people like plan a wedding and if they have a wedding planner, or, I don't know, research wise, you got to plan for food because it's, it, it is expensive. It, it's a really expensive thing. And then it's like when you want to add extra and you want to have multiple proteins and stuff and these, these like elaborate proteins, it's like, you're gonna you're that's gonna cost a lot and you want you want servers that you're stacking it up where you're like yeah my budget's a thousand dollars for 200 people for all that kind of food it's like that's literally not possible if i mm-hmm. do that i'm losing money yeah it's like what's the point you know yeah. they're like you can't make it happen no so i've, I've had an issue with that with catering orders where i told people like hey you know when you want to make we can talk all day about what you want but when you want to book the requirement is when you book, you have to pay me half. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I want the other half. I, I don't remember what time frame I told this person because the type of event it was. And it was for a big event. And they're like, yeah, yeah, cool. Um, I'll pay you like Friday. And I'm like, no, that's not how this works. Like, <laughs> we're having this competition right now. Yeah. So this deal is for right now. And that's, that won't go up in a month in particular. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, 
it's a good conscious to, to I'm holding this date in reality it's I'm holding this date so and it's a popular date so if anyone else was like I want that date too I'm like oh no I already have a customer who mm -hmm. booked it and they put half down so I can't say that was client unless it's like far apart time wise mm -hmm. then I'll do two clients in one day I mean we're both still getting what we want I want to pay the gig you want food yeah also. really but it's like and I feel like food is downplayed as an art it's an art it's art, it's nurturing, it's caring, and it should, and it's like a, we actually care about it. We want to make sure that your food is cooked in the right way, the right temperature, it looks beautiful, and it tastes well. And it's something that you want to, when you talk, think about your event, you're like, oh, and I had this wonderful chef that made this blah, blah, blah for me, and it was like the best. Like, we want that memory for you, we want it for ourselves as mm -hmm. well. So. You put that picture in their mind. Yeah, yeah, you know. I've talked to a lot of people about stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I'll be as transparent as you need. I'm yeah. Just, the reason to lie because like you can easily look up stuff yourself exactly and figure yeah. it out but people don't think about oh you're paying i don't know 50 cents per per pound for this chicken and and you gotta you know get paid yourself this x amount and you gotta you know mm -hmm. trim it do blah 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 i gotta pay for all that that makes sense they're just thinking okay it's these cents a pound mm -hmm. i'm paying like you're not paying fifty cents a pound that's yeah, how this works. And also depending on the gig, right? Mm -hmm. So like, for example, that one gig, it was only for 140 people. So I, yeah, I carved out all the bones myself. But if it was for like 500 people, no way I'm going to do that. I'm just going to mm -hmm. buy it ready to go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This, this, the boneless, boneless thighs. And yeah. Call it, call it a day. <laughs> yeah. I've seen some like show shortcuts and I'm like, oh, you can't do that. They're like. You wouldn't do that? I'm like, I thought you had to, they're like, no, you could totally do the shortcut yeah. when it's this many people. And I'm like, okay, yeah. They're like, cause, and what they what this guy was like, he said to me, he was like, are they paying for this service of this extra, you know, thing that we would do if we're doing it in a certain kind of way? And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, no. He's like, and that's why you're doing it the other way. Yeah. Because unless they want to pay it, like, this person asked me, oh, well, is this meat organic? And I was like, do you know what your organic meat is of any any variety yeah and he was like no and i was like it's really it's really it's whole food prices the margins expensive. yeah and the margins are just i'll do it yeah. just know that you're gonna have to pay you know a higher a higher amount too is it really you know, organic you know i know we find out a lot about food where it's like oh you should be drinking oat milk almond milk coconut milk mm -hmm. and then someone's like no they're all bad only rice milk and that's the best it's like but what about it the arsenic? Is, yeah, yeah. It depends, on, it depends on you and your body, what you can eat, yeah. what you can have, and, and go from there. So, yeah. Well, be. we're about wrapping this up, but uh, before we go, can you tell us about any exciting developments happening in the Jamaican cuisine field? There's a lot more influence of Jamaican food and Caribbean food in general. Uh, people think that Jamaican food is the only quote unquote Caribbean cuisine, but you have Guyana, you have Belize, you have Bahamas, you have Trinidad. There's so many different uh islands and we get different things from them i'm seeing more modern takes even like in jamaica and the videos i see like the places there like mm -hmm. the mom pop shops now they're caring about what their food looks like presentation wise and they're being more modern with how they're plating stuff so it's like a bouncing back and forth of getting inspired by each other mm -hmm. on how to do things um so i i like it but i just think it's just getting more popular where we're seeing a lot of people try to make things in a caribbean-esque way well, they just add like the scotch bonnet uh, pepper, which mm -hmm. is, like, mm, or use calypso or something. Some, some, mm, we don't, we are, or calypso is not a thing. We, we call it, we, uh, we have bag juice. Bag juice. I don't know if you have it in your culture. Is it like, like, uh, with the soda? It's yeah, like, what you think it is. It's, okay. It's a with a straw. Bag with juice in it. Yeah, they have that in Mexico. There's no, no, we don't use a straw. Oh, just straight up. <laughs> you just, you just tear it. And then you can drink it down the street. Damn. So, that yeah. sounds badass. You get that like a little bag, like these like little cheese balls, as a yeah. kid, or like a quarter. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, that or patties. We say patties. Um, tasty patties. You get a tasty patty um, and a cocoa bread or a ginger beer. All right. Well, thank you, Chef Nia, for joining us today and sharing your experience with our listeners. Now, I know you have an event coming up for South By. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I know you can't really say much because it's so soon and you know how South By is. Yeah, uh, I have an event. Uh, I was going to say it's tentative. Um, it's supposed to be on Monday the 13th. And if I do, it'll be from like the early afternoon to late at night. Um, and then I'll have, I'm looking for other South By events too. Um, but then like you can catch me Monday and Thursday nights at Native. Um, Monday starting at 8 p.m., Thursday starting at 10 p.m. for the night market. 
Um, Y'all go check her out, man. Her food is fire. I used to go up there and I'll see her cooking because I'm cooking. We share the same kitchen. And man, her food is fire. I'll just smell it and it just make me hungry. But I have to go feed some people. So I have to just starve, you know, but. It's a recipe technique. Yeah. People come to me like, what's that? Is it you? Is it's you're delicious. Making, you're making that? I'm like, yeah, you want Yeah, I swear you had a fan or something blowing it all over the place because yeah, I it, smelled it. it. Was, uh, it's the curry, it's curry sticks. Yeah. So, like, people smell that. Awesome. Well, this has been great conversation with you. We appreciate you taking the time to come all the way out here. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. And you have a great day. Stay safe, stay positive, and go check out Native Hostel and uh, Mama A's ATS.